بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to this short segment about الحياة or modesty and shyness beloved brothers and sisters in Islam الحياة or the shy and modest one is one of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this name, it's a perfect attribute that befits the majesty of Allah Azza wa Jal. The ulama, they mention that some of the meanings of this name is that Allah Azza wa Jal, He covers the faults of His slaves. He doesn't expose their sins. And from the meanings of modesty with respect to the names of Allah Azza wa Jal, is that Allah feels shy to turn away the hands of His slaves when they raise them to call upon Him. And from the names or from the meanings of this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah loves those of His servants that have modesty or that are imbued with this beautiful quality of modesty, al haya. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, for us to practice modesty, what haya means for a servant or a slave of Allah azza wa jal is that a person, they feel shy from disobedience to Allah. They feel shy from exposing themselves, their sins, their privacy in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. One of the pious predecessors, he said, I left sin for 40 years because of my shyness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then only after that I became scrupulous and I left sin out of piety. So this shyness from wanting, from wanting to hide our sin, from trying to stay away from immodesty, exposing ourselves, exposing ourselves to even media, to television or internet that shows inappropriate, obscene things, feeling shy from that, that is part of Iman. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Al-haya'u min al-Iman. Shyness is from Iman. Feeling embarrassed about that, those situations where inappropriateness is being done is part of our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, how can we inculcate this beautiful quality of al haya in our lives? Number one, we can increase this quality by reflecting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounties upon us. When we reflect and think about all of the blessings Allah has given us, our health, our life, our, our vision, our hearing, our seeing, when we think about these bounties, how can we use them to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we realize and feel the blessing of Allah upon us, it will help us to be shy, to use those limbs and those blessings Allah has given us to disobey Him. Another way to increase our haya, our modesty, is by reflecting and realizing that Allah Azza wa Jal is watching us. By reflecting on Allah Azza wa Jal's beautiful names and attributes, Al-Basir, Al-Shaheed, Al-Raqib. Allah, He's the watchful one. He is seeing us. As-Sami'a. He's hearing us. When we reflect on these names of Allah, they will help us to have haya and shyness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way to increase our haya is by reflecting about the Day of Judgment and the Resurrection and standing in front of all of mankind and thinking about how our sins will be shown and exposed and and brought in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking about crossing the sirat, by reflecting on those things, it will help to develop haya in our hearts. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, one of the pious predecessors, Hatim al-Asam, he had a beautiful statement. He said, the way to have haya is to realize that whenever you speak, Allah is a samia Allah is the one who hears us. Whenever you act, Allah is on basir He sees you. He sees us when we're on the internet. What He sees us when we're alone in front of the TV. He knows what we're doing. And when we think or when we imagine things, Allah is the al-alim. He is the knowledgeable. He knows what is in our hearts. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I'd like to close with just a reminder for me and you that in today's society, we have to be more cautious to develop modesty and hayat 
in a society that doesn't encourage this attribute of having haya, having shyness, having modesty, we have to develop that more. We can remember the Prophet ﷺ, he was shy, more shy than a virgin girl in her own house. And how the the girl the of the two daughters in Madian, when Musa ﷺ, he came to help them with their sheep, she came walking, كانت جاءت تمشي على استحياء. Allah says she came walking with so much shyness and she was very direct with Musa salam. Come, my father wants to reward you. She didn't stop and pause to have conversation and ask him how he was. She walked shyly and she got directly to the point. And this is how we need to, uh, inshallah, be in our interactions with the opposite gender. And one last thing before we close. Shyness is a beautiful attribute but it shouldn't prevent us from seeking knowledge. When we want to seek knowledge and ask questions, even in matters pertaining to sexuality, it's permitted to ask those questions. One of the Sahabiyat, she came to the Prophet ﷺ, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحِي مِنَ الْحَقِّ She said, Allah is, never sh- is not shy from the truth. And she asked him about a private matter relating to having a dream at night. So our shyness should prevent us from sin. Our shyness should make us be embarrassed to do sin and to look at haram and to think about haram, to listen to haram. But it should not be a barrier between us and seeking beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the quality of hayat. May Allah bless you and accept from you. Wa jazakum khairan. Very happy to speak to you and inshallah we'll continue in the future with these very beneficial videos. May Allah accept from you and reward you. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين